Our next topic in Chapter 8 is the section in the book entitled Non-Demand Curve Approaches to Valuation. Well, the section is actually called Approaches to Valuation. It's on page 114. But what, I'm, what I want to talk about here is the right-hand side of box 8.3, which is called... The, so the right-hand side of box 8.3 is a diagram. It is called Non-Demand Curve Approaches. And the entire box, the, the top of the figure, is called Monetary Evaluation Methods. Now, um, I say this is my version because I, 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 don't, <laughs> I don't actually agree with the title here. Um, I, I'm going to point out here and here and here and here that what the book is actually talking about is not uh, valuation per se. The right-hand side of box 8.3 is, in, in my opinion, not about valuation, which is what the title of the section is. The left-hand side of box 8.3, which is what we'll do in the next video, that is about valuation. The right-hand side methods aren't about valuation, which means to put a value on an environmental amenity, but they are different ways that you uh, different ways of helping make a social decision about an environmental problem. So it's useful information. I just wouldn't call it valuation. So the first one is dose response. This is this terminology comes from medical research, where you let's say have a laboratory uh, uh, mouse and you're trying to see whether a particular chemical is toxic. So you give uh, one mouse a small dose, and another mouse a bigger dose, and another mouse an even bigger dose, and so forth, and you see what the response is. So the dose refers to the amount of chemical, and the response refers to the response that the animal has. So this, this is not a valuation method. It doesn't provide a value but it does provide scientific facts about the result of different pollution levels. And when you're trying to find the external cost and marginal external cost curve, you're asking what are people willing and able to pay to reduce pollution. We do this on the assumption that they know what the, co what the harmful result of pollution is. Now, this is a quite a big assumption because actually even scientists don't always know what the harmful result of pollution is. But that's what the economist is assuming. Of course, that assumption implies that the people who are reporting their willingness to pay to reduce pollution know what the dose response is. So people use the dose response information in order to decide how bad pollution is and therefore how much they'd be willing to pay willing and able to pay to reduce it so dose response information is really useful and if you don't have it then the the people who are telling you what their willingness and ability to pay is to reduce pollution don't have full information and so you can't really make social decisions on the basis of incomplete information i mean you'll make the wrong decision the next thing they talk about is replacement cost, which is defined here as the cost of, of copying or replacing the lost environmental amenity someplace else. A concrete example, when the Legacy Highway, which uh, is, a, uh, is a freeway that was built around the year 2000 in the northern part of Salt Lake County and then up into Davis County, uh, when it was proposed, environmental groups were very unhappy because it was going to destroy some of the wetlands near the Great Salt Lake. So one of the uh, one of the mitigation steps that was required is that the state actually construct new wetlands somewhere else on the shoreline of the Great Salt Lake, a place where there hadn't been any wetlands before. And the, the cost of constructing these new wetlands to replace the ones that were going to be destroyed by the construction of the of the Legacy Parkway is the replacement cost. 
So, is, is this before? No, this isn't a value. But if the value of the lost asset, an external cost, is the value of the lost asset, because you're losing this asset, and how bad is that? That's the external cost. So if the value of the lost asset is greater than its replacement cost, then you ought to replace it if it's been destroyed. So knowing the replacement cost helps you making social decisions. It it uh, well it says exactly this this uh, this social decision rule that if the if the value of the lost asset is greater than the replacement cost, then you ought to incur the replacement cost because you get the lost asset back in a different place. But um, but presumably it's I mean on the assumption is that it's a it's a perfect substitute, and uh, and then society benefits from that. Conversely, of course, if the value of the lost asset is less than its replacement cost, then it wouldn't make sense for society to uh, to incur the cost of replacing it. All right, now the next one here, mitigation cost, is actually extremely similar. Um, it's the cost of remediating the environmental damage. So replacement cost was the cost of copying it, and mitigation cost is the cost of remediating it. Remediating it means fixing it. Uh, in some sense, uh, replacement cost is a special case of mitigation cost, where the remediation or the mitigation is to construct a new, let's say, a new wetland. So mitigation cost or remediation is a more general principle. Anything that can lessen or eliminate the environmental damage. For example, if you decide to allow airplanes to approach an airport along a direction which previously they weren't allowed to fly on, uh, that in increases the noise level of people living underneath that so-called flyway. The a mitigation, a way to mitigate that would be to replace the windows in those homes with other kinds of special windows that don't transmit sound as as much as just regular glass windows do. And uh, so the expense of doing that would be a mitigation cost. So again, this isn't a value, but it does give you the following kind of rule to make a social decision, which is that if the value of the lost asset, which is the external cost, just like just like this was, if the value of the lost asset is greater than the mitigation cost, then the mitigation ought to be performed. So both mitigation cost and replacement cost do give you this social decision-making rule, even though they themselves are are not the value. And in fact, you know, in, in some sense, well, they're literally the opposite, the other side of the inequality. So the we have mitigation costs and replacement costs here. That's on the right-hand side of this inequality. What's on the left-hand side of the inequalities are external costs. The external cost is the valuation. So what we're going to need, in the, and what we're going to talk about in the next video, is how to get the external cost. That is literally what valuation is, is how to get the external cost. So what we're talking about here isn't the left-hand side of this of these inequalities? It's the right-hand side. So, as I said now several times before, it's not it's not really valuation. It, but you use it together with valuation in order to make a social decision. Okay. So the last one here is opportunity cost. Let me first define opportunity cost because it's a a broad term that e that economists uh, use in many different contexts with two mutually exclusive alternatives. All right. So mutually exclusive is extremely important here. The idea is that you have to choose either A or B. You can't choose both and you can't choose neither. You're forced into choosing either A or B. Uh, so mutually exclusive means that, well, it, mean, it means what I just said. You have to, you have to pick either A or B. The opportunity cost of choosing A is defined to be the value of B. And the opportunity cost of choosing B 
is defined to be the value of a. In other words, with this kind of choice, if you pick one, you can't have you can never have the other. And so even if the cost of picking one is free, even even if these are two two things that don't cost any money at all, in picking one you deprive yourself of the other one and that's a cost. And an economist call this the opportunity cost because you've lost the opportunity of choosing that one. So uh, a, a simple example would, would be if you're choosing one of two people to get married to, the opportunity cost of choosing one person is the the, the value of, of uh, a married life with the other person, the experience of being married to the other person. You're going to lose that uh, if, uh, w once you've made the decision. So that's the definition of, that's the definition of opportunity cost. Um, as, as I said before, opportunity cost is not a value. But let's see how to use the opportunity cost in social decision making. Suppose A is protecting the environment, and B is paving over the environment to build a parking lot. The opportunity cost of protecting the uh, of of paving over the environment is the value of environmental protection, the, the, val the value of a pristine environment. Now again, B is going to incur other costs. You have to pay the paving company to pave the, um, <clears throat> to build a parking lot. Um, but here we're just talking about the opportunity cost. This doesn't help determine the value of A because, as I said here, this isn't a method of determining value. But even so, what it shows is that it's not necessary to de determine the exact value of uh, A, actually, let me fix that. All right, so I, I fixed that typo. So it's not necessary to determine the exact value of A in order to make the right dis social decision. The only thing you need to know about A's value is whether or not it exceeds B's value. And B's value might be easier to determine. So A is environmental protection. B is the parking lot. Suppose you know the, the net value of B. Which is the value that B brings to you minus the cost of constructing the parking lot. Then in order to make a social decision, you don't have to know an exact value for A. All you need to know is whether A is less than B or greater than B. And if you know the value of B, then that means that a lot of even a lot of uncertainty about A might still be enough to might still allow you to make a decision about whether to to build a parking lot or not. So as I say in the last in the last sentence here. So uncertainty in knowing A's value need not paralyze decision making. Uh, let me give a concrete example. Suppose you knew that the net value of B was a hundred dollars, and suppose the value of A, environmental protection, was somewhere between a hundred and twenty dollars and a hundred and fifty dollars, but you didn't know where. Well, still here, the value of environmental protection, the value of the un undestroyed environment, regardless of whether it's 120, 150, or somewhere in between, is going to be higher than 100. And so you can make the decision not to buy, not to build a parking lot, even though you don't, even though you still have this $30 uncertainty in 
how valuable the the uh, pristine environment is. S similarly, if instead of 120 to 150 dollars, it was 60 dollars to 80 dollars, then again, you don't need to know where between the range of 60 to 80 the value of the pristine environment is. You know, you because regardless of where it is, you know it's going to be less than 100, and therefore, what society ought to do is build a parking lot. All right, so these are these four things: dose response, replacement cost, mitigation cost, and opportunity cost um, are good things to know, and and dose response is almost uh, almost vital to know in order to be able to make some kind of logical decision about how much you want to how much you're willing and able to pay to reduce pollution, but these themselves are not valuation methods. However, what we'll do in the next video is talk about value, valuation methods.